Now the bank is raising interest rates. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because I want to talk about, well, an article that's just come out from Yahoo Finance written by Lucy Dean. Now, this really feels like an advertisement for Rate City. So, ANZ joins Combank and Westpac in hiking rates, everyone. So we've got another one of the big four lifting up interest rates. And here she highlights how that you know the ANZ has increased its rates for two, three, four, and five year fixed terms. And it's gone from you know 2.04 down to 1.99. So they're still having that sub 2% fixed term, but it's only for one year, where I got mine at four years. And I'm sure a lot of you have managed to get decent and good interest rate savings or lock them in. Probably because none of us trust the Reserve Bank to not up the hike the cash rate up early. We'll see. Then you've got, you know, the two year rate from one point nine four, so sub two percent up to two point oh nine, three years from two point oh four to point two point three nine, four years has gone up and five years has gone up. They all have. Now, no one at all is surprised about this, but what we're seeing here now is the actual impact this is gonna have. I chucked the sums into Excel. So if you're going for a four Hundred thousand dollar mortgage from a one point one nine one point nine four percent up to two point zero nine. That's about a thirty dollar change a month, and this is on thirty years terms. None of the extra costs or things associated with it, just the raw, you know, repayment rate at this this amount in this time frame. So you're talking thirty bucks a month. Now that equates to an increase of two point zero five percent. If we're going to some of the higher, some of the you know the 2.69 to 2.89, that's a $42 a month increase. Now, these are not amounts to be scoffed at. 30 bucks a month, $42 a month, that's that's a whole month's worth of coffee right there at 7-Eleven. That's a decent steak that you can get at the shops. It's some uh, foodstuffs that you can buy to support your family. But it is only an increase of 2% and 2.62% on of your monthly repayments. Here we have the RBA's predictor of interest rate increases or decreases and at the moment right now it's predicting a decrease of rates to at 74 75 percent down to zero percent it's not going to happen guys we're not going to see these rates go down but the the consideration is how much of an impact will you know, this have 2.5 and 2.6 two percent because what we're seeing here in in these type of articles, it's, it, everyone is interested in interest rates. We all, uh, many people have mortgages. Many people are following the property sector. Many people are hoping any sign of an interest rate increase will be the collapse of the housing sector, a decline in the market. We, we're all hyped up over what happened last year with RBA modeling a 40% decline, every bank predicting a decline in property. And then, well, what's happened? Asking prices are going up again and again and again. Literally, today we got a letter from the real estate for the house we're renting. They want to up the rent again to lock us in. And we've only been in there for quite a short amount of time. So it's just nuts. Queensland is going crazy. Let's have a look at a few things. This is the capital city. We'll reload this page. The asking weekly asking property prices. You can see the growth that we've got right there, everyone. Look at that. The all homes is up to 1.14 million. Now, if we include the national, so this includes all the regions, you can see even there, everything's going up, guys. Now, is this going to have a calamitous issue on the property sector? Well, 30 bucks, it's a 2%, 2 to 3% increase on your monthly expenses that you put towards your housing. Now, will that tip some people over the edge? I, I seriously don't think it will. There's one thing we need to look at. It's the, this consideration of what housing stress is. This is the definition. It's typically described as low income. So lower income households that spend more than 30% of their gross income on housing costs. So if that 30%, if you're sitting there, if you're under housing stress, it goes up by 2%. Sure, it might make a difference, but we're only talking about the lower income parts of the economy here, guys. And I'm going to bring this up here, just showing you the differences in, in household income. The lowest we're talking, people who are earning a household, $433. So how many of those are going to be in property and going to be at the edge of a mortgage? How many of those will have mortgages that perhaps maybe it's a government program or they're supported to get into it? It's not going to affect 
ever, anyone on higher income. It's not going to affect anyone on middle income. It, it, won't, it won't dent them, even if they're sitting at that 30%. I, I honestly think people's obsession with that 30% is a little bit outdated considering how much, well, how much people have had to fight to just get through to, into a house. Here's a few other things I want to look at. Prepayments, people are well ahead on their mortgages. You can see, you know, yeah, yeah, not just owner-occupiers, investors as well. You've got liquidity buffers where people have access to money either in cash or in you know an offset account that they can get access to. Outright homeowners have got 10 months, everyone. Indebted homeowners have four months. Now, that should give people time to, well, address any potential issues and any potential increases in in your rising rates, guys. So what, what do I think about all of this? Honestly, I think this is certainly it, the banks are just in lockstep. One after the other are increasing the rates. We're going to start seeing them creep up. They are still at, at insanely low levels. The Reserve Bank used to consider a 3% cash rate an emergency rate. We're nowhere near that. It's going to take them some time to go back to that, if they even can. Here's the thing. Are we trapped in this low rate cycle now? If you know, In a few years' time, if they're up 1%, up 2%, are they going to make a significant jump? They may be left behind by the rest of the world and have to make that call. But we'll have to see what will happen to the housing market if we have a significant increase. Honestly, I think the banks have got enough of a buffer with regards to the people they're lending to. I think most people we've seen, we've seen the majority of people have gone through uh, tough times with the you know mortgage holidays now that have that all the banks have given them. I would hope that a lot of them have got their well their shit together and have have sorted everything out so that if there are more issues coming forward, they'll be able to handle it a bit better and won't find themselves in that position again. We'll have to see. Maybe everyone's just spending on afterpay. So I mean, there we have it, guys. We've got the banks. Raising rates, uh, not a significant amount. It's going to make a small dent on people's repayments. Those that are going to feel it are probably already struggling now. I mean, honestly, money is so cheap right now. Mortgage repayment rates are so low right now. If you're struggling, you're really, really in trouble, guys. And I don't think, yeah, honestly, you've got to really sort stuff out. So, If you enjoyed that video, guys, thank you very much. I've got another one right here for you to have a look at, which is looking at higher interest rates expected. Check that out to look at some predictions and some concerns about those rates. Thank you all for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. Support the channel with the referral links below, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.